Good afternoon and welcome to NYFP. In midday trade on this Thursday afternoon, the major U.S. stock averages remain in positive territory. We are seeing gains today on the heels of some better than expected flash PMI data. Joining me now is Sandra Navidi of Beyond Global. Good afternoon, Sandra. Pleasure to be here, Remy. Well, we are seeing U.S. equities higher today, but we did see some confusion yesterday afternoon. Following the release of the FOMC meeting minutes, we saw the Dow tank over 100 points, and then it came back up, and we closed in negative territory. So given that the FOMC meeting minutes did not provide anything enlightening or anything new, why do you think we saw so much confusion? I think it's a classic case of confirmation bias where everybody read the protocol so that it matched their expectations and markets don't like uncertainty and so they reacted with volatility. And we know that the Federal Reserve will remain data dependent. We have one more huge jobs report before we get the next FOMC meeting minutes. But given that we're seeing uh, some improvement in U.S. housing, what do you make of uh, the difference between the markets and the economy? We're seeing a great dichotomy between the markets and the economy. And that's probably because of a distortion because of, of the money printing, the QE. And so what we're seeing is that the market is performing exceedingly well. Yet the corporate sector, for instance, is very negative, And that's unusual because the stock market usually acts in expectation of future performance. So the, stock mar the, the corporate sector, though, is, is warning you know, and is very careful, is paying out a lot of cash to investors because they don't see investment opportunities. So that's why we expect a correction to the downside eventually uh, from the, by the, with regard to the stock market. And speaking of the stock market, we've been getting some mixed uh, retail earnings this week, so we'll continue to monitor the handful of earnings that do remain for this uh, season. But another thing we've been paying attention to is the emerging markets. So we saw the equity as well as currency markets of Indonesia, as well as India and Turkey, uh, see some fallout from expectations regarding tapering. But how concerned are you about those emerging markets? very concerned. We saw already in May that the, uh, that the announcement of eventual QE led to great capital outflows of, of the emerging markets. And at that point, the IMF warned the U.S. to please be careful with the tapering because it could have unintended consequences for the emerging markets and also then in turn for the U.S. And Sandra, last but not least, before we wrap it up, uh, tomorrow it will be fairly light in terms of uh, the global economic calendar, but we do have uh, Fed officials gathering over in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, for their annual Fed symposium. So given that we have this gathering uh, today as well as tomorrow, and then we have Labor Day coming up as well, what can we expect going forward? Well, I think in September, first and foremost, a potential tapering will be on people's minds. And then we have the um, elections in Germany, which are viewed as a harbinger for the future of the Eurozone. Greece is back on the radar. It, it needs a, a third rescue package. And then, of course, the U.S. Um, debt and household issues are still not resolved either. So it's probably going to be a volatile month. Okay, Sandra. Well, we should enjoy the last few weeks of August. So thank you so much for joining me today, and thanks for your insight. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Remy.